Okay, in this quick tutorial for new Blender users, I'm going to show you some of the tricks I use for modeling these objects for both the game environment and for cycles as well. So this particular motorcycle that I'm working on is going to be for both environments. And so in the game environment, I want it to be f very few polygons. However, if you look at this object here, it's this thing is loaded with faces. Let me see if I go into edit mode here. It has, well, that's got 480 faces by itself. That has, no, can it really be part of that thing? 6,432 faces? It could be with everything that's in there as far as all the objects in that model here. Let's see. Yeah, it's that. 6,432. So that's really overkill in a lot of ways. But what I found is when you're working in the game environment, for certain things you can put way off in the distance like this, right? And it can look like a pretty good representation of a motorcycle, even way over there. And one of the reasons is, uh, you know, I mean, there's hardly anything in there. They're missing the middle part of the thing. There's no frame on the motorcycle. You know, a lot of the parts are missing, yet from a distance, it's a reasonable representation. And the other thing that helps make it work, even though there's so very few things in this model, is that as long as you have one thing in the model that is really well detailed, like in this case, these wheels, they're well detailed. Like if you come up here and look up close at here, these are well-made hubs with you know all the holes and the spikes, spokes and everything. And that's what helps bring this model to life because if it wasn't for that, then it would really look kind of fleek. But as long as you have at least one thing, then that really helps, all right? The other thing is, take a look at this, this object here, the gas tank. So if I go into edit mode, so these are fairly well-formed surfaces, nice edge loops I can get except down here on this back edge, like this. No, there's still, no, I still have those in there. Yeah, what am I thinking here? Let me see, let's get them. Yeah, it's still, my edge loops are still in good shape here. But in this case, what could be improved here is by using a uh, subdivision surface on the modifiers. So I'll come over here and I'll use subdivision and you'll see that smooths it out pretty good. Here's what it like looks like without any subdivision applied. And then I actually, actually, actually kind of like this kind of look anyway, but if I was going to use it in cycles rendering, I wouldn't want that. But it, you would see one, two, it, and there by the time I get there, that's quite a nice level of smoothing, but also cranks up the number of faces significantly. But that can really improve the situation. But I found you have to be kind of careful about how you use that because it doesn't work in all models. Like if I, if I was to bring up that airplane model again and look at this one here, and you can see all the faces in here easy enough, but you need these hard edges out here, these sharp corners down here for these wing tips in general, then I mean not completely sharp of course, but if I was to take this model and I was apply a subdivision surface to this a couple times, you can see what's happening out here at this wingtip. Suddenly it's radically deformed the shape of it. If I go up to two, three, now it's a whole different shaped wing look. It's like, no, I'm not buying it. For me that ruins the shape of that particular thing there. So you, you can't just blindly go throwing subdivision surface in at everything. But it is, it is really good for a lot of things as well. All right, well, that was it. Just wanted to point out those few points, and I'll see you in the next lesson.